This is your house. These are your neighbor's houses. How many of these neighbors do you know by name? Go ahead, try to name them. If you're like most people these days, you probably only know a few of your neighbors by name. We have garages for our cars, privacy fences for our backyards, and we seem to be perpetually busy. You're doing pretty well if you wave or say hi as you're passing by. But what if we did more? What if we made it a point to learn the names of the people who live on our block? What if we took the time to listen to our neighbors and find out what makes them tick? What if our neighborhoods relied on each other in times of need, whether it be for a cup of flour or a shoulder to cry on? What if Jesus really meant that we should love our actual neighbors? Imagine the difference you could make in your neighborhood if you got to know your neighbors better. Imagine the difference you could make in your community if you partnered with others who had a desire to become better neighbors. Imagine the difference it could make in our cities if local churches were working together to make this a reality. You don't have to imagine very hard. It's happening. Check out The Art of Neighboring to discover how you can join others around the world to build genuine relationships right outside your door. Good morning, Morningside Baptist. How are you doing? Praise the Lord. What a great day to come and worship the Lord in spirit and truth. For those that do not know me, my name is Sam Ayala. I do serve as a mission consultant in the Southwest and Southeast. I just got a promotion <laughs> uh, <laughs> all across the South for God's glory. So the good news about it is that we get to enjoy fellowship with pastors and churches and on a side note, just a secret, I get to meet my extended family in the Lord. Amen? So I see you. I'm grateful for you. I'm thankful for the Lord for what he's doing in your life and my life. And at the end of the day, Jesus is coming back and we're going to be celebrating in glory. Amen? Amen? And that's the good news, man, that God is good. doesn't matter the circumstances that we go through. God is good. So I do serve at the Georgia Baptist Mission Board, receive greeting from uh, our executive director, Thomas Hammond, and all the Georgia Baptist staff. And, and Morningside, I just want to thank you on behalf of my family, on behalf of all the uh, staff of Georgia Baptist, because uh, uh, you believe in, in giving not only for Mission Georgia, but to, through the cooperative program so the gospel could be proclaimed all over the world, including Georgia. So I just want to thank you. I just I want you to give yourself a hand of applause because your giving make this possible, that the word of God is proclaimed, the gospel of Jesus Christ is proclaimed, and people are coming to faith in Jesus Christ and, are, and is adding to what's called the faith family. Amen? Also re uh, received greeting from my family, my lovely wife, Lusa Yala, and, and my son out of four, Sammy Jr. They, we are um, members at Sherwood Baptist Church, and uh, they, they're just engaging and being part of what's called the body, the church. So I see, I, I am so grateful to be part of uh, this uh, series called My Church. And like the pastor uh, just um, uh, announced, it's not a building, it, it's not a, a, a structure, it's us. Those are followers of Jesus Christ. He said that he called us to be the church. And this morning, um, I want to uh, just focus on the first part of the series on seeking the lost. You heard a video, a video that, that concerns us that we need to continue engaging with who? With people. Do you know that God is in the business of restoring people and, and reaching people and pointing people and drawing people to himself for his glory's sake. So that's why I want you to open your, your Bibles in the book of Acts, which we all know. Uh, book of Acts chapter 1, we, we see, we see the, the verses or the verse that, that, that Jesus uh, uh, commends us. This is just part of the great 
commandment, and that's one out of five scriptures in the New Testament and in the Gospels. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John has the Great Commission plus Acts has the Great. So we have five verses re-emphasizing that the gospel is true, that the gospel of Jesus Christ works. Can you repeat with me? The gospel of Jesus Christ works. If not, we will not be here. It transformed you, it transformed your family, it transformed the community, and it transformed the whole wide world, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as you open your Bibles in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says and states this way in the New Living Translation that um, I love that Pastor Jonathan goes through the New Living uh, Translation. It, it, it's, so, it's so awesome. It says, it says here, but when, you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive what? You will receive what? Power and will tell people about me everywhere. Where? In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning in agreement with your spirit, Lord, that you have called us outside of the four walls, Father, to engage with people. It could be uh, uh, the neighbors. It could be our immediate families that do not serve you. It could be in our workplace. It could be in the university or wherever we're studying. Lord, uh, uh, you are calling us, Father. We ask you this morning that you resonate your word in our hearts. And just like James says, that we don't just be hearers of your word, but we actually be doers of your word, Father God. So, Father, uh, speak to us this morning for your glory's sake and for your kingdom expansion. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. So when we speak about when you receive power, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the word power there in the Greek means dunamis, means explosion. And, and what that means is that, that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when it came upon me in 1988, what it does is in, it encourages you and me to fulfill the Great Commission. It gives you what's called boldness. And, and you probably would not uh, uh, receive or accept this or believe this, but, but I used to be, when I came to the Lord, I used to be the person that I would sit in the back of the back of the pews uh, uh, in church. Why? Because uh, uh, the father, uh, uh, besides that we're Baptists, but the father, the better, right, in front of the altar, amen? How many resonates with, with me? Not only that, but also that I find myself a person that is timid, do not like to engage, do not like to connect, and I'm the timid type uh, that I, that's why I stood back there because I didn't want to be exposed. But, but when the power of the Holy Spirit came upon me, it transformed my life. It made me different. It made me bold. It made me courageous, not because of my strength, not because of my ability to talent, but it's because of the mercy and grace that God had with me and I'm believing and seeing what Jesus Christ did on the cross for me. Man, I could stay forever speaking to you about the different years and months and things that happened into my life that draws me closer to God. And I know you have a story. And I know that you've gone through a lot of, a lot of things that you could just say, I quit, never again, I want to serve the Lord. But thankful to our Savior, thankful to the Holy Spirit that prompts in us to continue pursuing God. We are here this morning worshiping Him and thanking Him for His goodness. So, so when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, just believe the fact that it's encouraging you to do something out of your comfort zone. Out of your comfort zone. Because sometimes we get into this routine of every Sunday come, worship, hear the message, go home, enjoy a football game, enjoy a meal, but not, not aware of what's Jesus' intention. 
His, Jesus' intention, it says, it says here, to seek people with the gospel of Jesus Christ with intentionalities to share God's love, God's peace, and God's joy. I don't know about you, but my heart breaks because as we are listening to God's message this morning, it's his word. And he is inspiring us and he is encouraging us. But at the same time, he is challenging us to do more than what we're doing today. Can you say the word more? More. There is always more in the Lord. There is always more challenges. There is more engagement. There is more ways for us to connect with people that right now as I'm preaching, people are dying and going to the pit of hell. But that's why God called us. That's why God grafted us into what the vine. For you that are, that are listening to me, we was not supposed to be part of plan of salvation in our lives. Because Jesus came for who? For the Jews. But because we are Gentiles and there's grace and mercy, God grafted us to where? Through the vine, which is him, through Jesus Christ. And now we could say that all nation, people in tongues shall worship and praise the Lord. Amen? Doesn't matter what color skin you are you have. Doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter the parents that you have. It doesn't matter what social, economic, or uh, academic preparations you have. What matters is by grace we're saved and we need to proclaim. We need to shout out, speak, like the worship said, magnify Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I don't know, Pastor Jonathan, but I get fired up. Just the engagement part because this is me. Before, I was shy, but now I am bold. But it's not, like I said before, through me, it's through, it's through the Holy Spirit of God prompting me and saying, speak with that person. Prompting me, speak to the other person. Prompting me, pray for him. Prompting me, saying, pray for her. So, just a side note, wherever I go, my family comes with me. Where are we at? I try to make it as my priority, being intentional, of trying to find somebody to just witness and just to proclaim and just to share the love, the joy, and the peace that's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this morning, you are challenged also to engage, to come out of your comfort zone. Engagement is not, is not uh, the other thing that, that Jesus Christ says, for the Son of Man came to seek. Repeat that word, seek. Meaning, he's going to look forward. He's going to follow. He's going to be looking out for a person. You know that this is doable? So I challenged myself. I said, Lord, Monday morning, Lord, I want to meet a person that I never met before. I want to get to know his name, and I want to get to know him. I want to be intentional. I want to relate. And you, do you know that during the week I was seeking and, and I was just looking for the opportunity, and the opportunity arises? The stat says that if you are intentional in meeting new people that you never met before, coming out of your comfort zone, out of 10 people, one person was going to connect and resonate with you, out of 10. So you imagine a church body going out and connecting with folks. This Columbus, Georgia will be a different Columbus, Georgia because we are intentional with the gospel. We are intentional and in engaging with folks. Uh, we are intentional and in, in, in fulfilling that Jesus Christ came with a purpose, and we as the church body, we are here for a purpose. He, Jesus said, now that I'm going and I'm, I'm ascending, I'm going to be praying, and I'm preparing a place for you, you, the church, you and me, are going to continue doing the work that I continue or started doing. I tell the Lord, why me? And you ask yourself sometimes, why me? Because you're the person for the right job. You're the person that God called to be in this time of season 
to, to, to worship the Lord, to seek the Lord, but it's to be equipped. If, if, before we go to equip, it's to be engaged with who? With first God the Father. Do you know that God is a relational God? And how can I demonstrate all pr in a practical way the relationship that we have with our Father? Our relationship with God is a, is a vertical relationship. Am I right? We relate, we pray, we seek, we are obeying, we, we are trying to find a way to fulfill his great commission, uh, reaching the people that he created, and then not only that, expanding his kingdom, because it's his kingdom, so we relate to God. But then God tells us in Matthew chapter 22, not only that you've got to love God with all your mind, your heart, your soul, but you've got to love who? Others. And when, when you see that relationship with others is a horizontal relationship. So vertical and horizontal, what does that form? And in the center is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ can never be put to the side of the equation of the relationship with our Father and the relationship with others. So just know and just understand that you're here in this time of season to be used by God. You are his vessel to proclaim, to proclaim the gospel that transform not only an individual but families in the whole entire Columbus, Georgia state or state Georgia and the whole wide world. That's the engagement part. Now, he equips us because he just don't throw us and say, engage with the folks and, 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 you know, whatever happens, happens. Just the way a lot of organizations do, just the, just the way others do. No, he, he, he equips us. Um, for those that, 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 that do construction or handyman, um, right now I'm, 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 I'm finishing up and, and, and building a, a shed a shed 16 by 24 foot and 10 feet tall. And, and yesterday I, I was just wrapping it around because, uh, so we don't want the wood to, to rot. And, but but, but on, the, on the equipping part, for me to build a shed, for those construction workers or handyman, we need tools, amen? How many love tools? I love tools. <laughs> I try to see one new and then I'll buy it. My wife, what are you doing? You got so much tools. <laughs> So we, got, we work with wood, and when you work with wood, something needs to cut the wood. <laughs> a saw, right? But then when you want to put the wood together, you need a screws, and you have a power drill as a tool. But then some old school use hammers for the nails, and that's, that's okay, that's okay. But, but what I'm trying to illustrate is that God has given us tools on our tool belts to use them for his glory's sake, but to reach others. And that's called evangelism. Three circles, the Romans Road. How many know the Romans Road? Back in the days, we, we used to, you know, Romans Road, huh? There's so many tools. No sweat evangelism. That's a tool that, there's so many tools. But, but I, I tell you this, I tell you this. Out of all the tools, use one. If it works, stick with it. If it doesn't work, Let's use another tool. Amen? So the art of neighboring, the art of neighboring taught us, uh, uh, me and my family, we lived in Lawrenceville, Georgia, in Gwinnett County. And um, when I got my hands on this book as a church planner, we read it through, my wife and I, and as we read it through, um, we was amazed about it that how can we be intentional with our neighbors? So, so one summer, summer afternoon, um, my son, he's playing with his friends, and all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, uh, uh, my wife said, let me, let me, you know, my wife, for you that do not know, I'm Puerto Rican, and, and my wife is Puerto Rican, so she do these mini empanadas. How many know what's empanadas? Yeah, mm, very good. Don't get hungry now. <laughs> so she did these mini empanadas. She, she, she did them from scratch and then sent them out. And this young girl just went running to her mom. Mom, you need to taste this. She's like, okay, what's that? Empanadas. When the, when the mother bit on it, she's like, ooh, this is good. Who did it? Mrs. Luce. 
Sammy's mom, she ran across the street and, and, and she knocked on the door. She said, hey, Mrs. Luce, um, I'm sorry to bother you, but, but those empanadas were great. Did you, did you bake that? Did you? Yeah, sure, we did that. She's like, I would love to learn. She's like, so let's do something. I teach you a little about a Puerto Rican culture with empanadas, and you teach me some Southern food culture, right? Yeah. What's fellowship, food, and fun? Oh, we all for that, amen? <laughs> so, so not only she came, she brought in three and four friends, and they started a small little connect group of learning different dishes. And we learned that from the art of neighboring because God, Jesus, called us to relate with others and then a small group arose from there. Guys, there are so many, op I see opportunities all across the board wherever I go. I hear pastors, I hear churches, I see churches going and doing, but, but, but this part of equipping is when the believers with the right set of tools and resources according to their abilities, talents, and giftedness. Pastor, I'm gonna say this and I probably won't be invited no more, but I'm sorry. But, so, so this is the thing, you have a gift. Stick to your gift. My gift is not singing. Oh, no, it'll rain, storm, hail, lightning. No, I preach the word of God because I've been called to preach. What that tells me is I got to be real with myself. Is that good? Nah, that's not good. <laughs> so meaning that, that, that you are gifted you need to take a spiritual assessment and know what your gift in this because even if they don't pay you and you, 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 you exec, you know, you're working in your gift in this environment and atmosphere, you'll do it with a smile. So, so for illustration purposes, welcome committee, you can't put a serious person that never smiles in a welcome, welcome me committee. Am I, am I, do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so I told you you're not going to invite me no more, but, <laughs> but, but this is the real, realization. So, but what are you gifted? I'm gifted in teaching. Oh, praise the Lord, because I'm going to put you in teaching, man. I'm not putting you in welcoming. Because uh, not that you don't welcome, right? It's that when, you come, when a person comes in, they want to see a smile. <laughs> so being that said, when we equip folks, we equip, equip folks according to their talents, to their abilities, and to their giftedness. Is, is that good? Is that good? So that's the equipping part. But now the empowering part is what I love. Because this is now all about, uh, 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 about us. It's about the kingdom of God moving forward. The empowering part tells us that the body is, needs to take ownership in the task in going and what? Doing. So one of the things that I, was, I, I started doing and, 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 and praying through the, you know, to the Lord about my, my presentation is, Father, that it just not be a regular Sunday morning sermon. Let it not be just another series. Let it be something that transform our lives, that when we leave, we start having conversation of how we're going to reach the lost folks. Because believe it or not, there are people that are hurting, they are isolated, and they are broken. We have the good news of Jesus Christ to point them to God and through Jesus so they could be at peace, they could have joy, and we could demonstrate the love of God. Demonstrate the love of God. So, so the Great Commission, Jesus talks to his disciple, and he tells them, therefore, go. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them, teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments or the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, that I am with you always, even at the end of the age. Go. But it doesn't stay there. Because James chapter 1, verse 22 tells us, 
but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. I'm fooling myself. Just hearing and, 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 and getting spiritually fat, if that's a term, and not sharing. Because whatever God is filling me, I need to empty out and share with others so then God could continue. And it's a cycle. Do you know the God that we serve is, is a cycle God? He did not give us a tree so we could bear the fruit. He gave us the seed that has a forest in it so we could work and we could just obey and water it and care for it. That's what God wants for us to water and care for this world. People are hurting. Especially with this uh, hurricane that just went by. Seeing the news, it breaks my heart. That's why I'm thankful for these people who uh, send relief that they just go and, 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 and then just care for people and, and love on people. And, and, and the thing is that we have the opportunity here to connect October 15th, is it? You're going to have a Morningside Market. And you may say, Sam, but it's, it's pushing me out of my comfort zone. That's okay. Just ask the Lord to give you strength, to give you boldness, to, to encourage you to do so. So it's, just, it's just, one, just one little term. Take a next step of spiritual growth. Be challenged. Obey what he is telling us. He, he is telling us that, that we need to go, that we need to do, uh, uh, because if not, we are fooling ourselves. We are fooling ourselves. And it's just a, it's just a great joy to hear God at work here in Morningside. And not only in Morningside, God is working in Columbus. Do you know that in Columbus, the most lost zip code is here? And uh, uh, 31907 is the zip code. We got six Baptist churches that are eager to receive teams. And that what speaks into unity, which, which, Pastor, we haven't heard a lot of churches coming together to fulfill one goal, one mission. And it's to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So when we celebrate crossover, I went with a group, with a, with a team from Morgan Baptist Church that came from the southwest up there to Columbus, and we, we started knocking on some doors, and all of a sudden, I, I met a brother from another mother. <laughs> he came from New York, and I'm like, I'm from New York. He's like, I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from the Bronx. Uh-oh. <laughs> so when we started engaging with him, I, 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 man, I connected well with him. I presented the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he came to New York, to, to Georgia, South Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, to receive Christ, and now he's going back with Jesus in his heart. Amen? That's what the power of the Holy Spirit and God does through you as a vessel and through me. So this morning, I want to encourage you. I want to inspire you. But I need to challenge you to take next steps on 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 engaging, on equipping, and being empowered to fulfill the Great Commission. So being an Acts 1-8 church through engaging, equipping, empowering the church to fulfill the Great Commission, it's from God's heart. So I know it's a lot. But at the same time, God has spoken to your heart. But it's now time to do and go. Or go and do what he asks us to do. Amen? Amen? Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, Father, we, we are so grateful for you and for what you've done in the cross. Father, we just ask you that you just give us the boldness, that you just encourage us, Father, so we could, so we could go out the four walls, Lord, and, and, and just connect with our community. As, as the beginning of the promotion, the video, Father, do, do we really know our neighbors? Do, do, you have, do we have a name? Do, can we associate or relate to one of them, Lord? Father, just use your body, use your church to advance your kingdom, to proclaim the gospel through the anointing of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Father, we are here listening, but we want to obey you, Lord. We want to obey you, Father, so you could, you could equip us with the tools and resources we need 
so we could, Father, be empowered and go and doing, Father. Father, Father, but it just starts with obedience. So I just ask you, Father God, that, that we may understand the urgency to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ this morning and to seeking the lost because that was Jesus' purpose and mission, Lord. So, Father, for those that you are stirring up in their hearts to, to, to be doers of your word, Father, let us re, let's unite and let's, let's start having conversation of how this could be. How can we be uh, equipped? How can we uh, uh, go and be empowered and, and have ownership of what you're calling us to do? Father, and so in Christ Jesus that we pray this morning. And the body and the church says, amen, amen. God bless you, my brother. Thank you. And thank you, pastor. As, as he shared this morning, as Christ sought, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost, he has commissioned us to be seeking. And if we are his church, then we do seek. A church that does not seek is not a church of Jesus Christ. And so here we are uh, deciding, will we be his church or will we be our church. Whose church is it after all? And when I consider the church that I long to pastor, I long to pastor a church that doesn't belong to me. It's not mine. I belong to it. I'm a part of it. I'm a member of the body of Christ, but I'm not the head. <laughs> he is. And how did He get to be the head of His church, His body? Here it is. It's a first Sunday. And what a beautiful picture of the contract that Jesus signed to be the boss of His church. He signed it in His own blood. He didn't call it a contract. He called it a covenant. He said, this is the new covenant in my blood. An agreement. Yes, a contract between God and God's people. That if we will come to Jesus in humility and in brokenness and in smallness, Samuel said, I was timid, but I came and received. Will you come and receive? what it is that you need. If you're going to be a seeker, you're going to need power. You're going to need boldness. If you're going to be His church, you're going to need Christ. So as the deacons pass around, they're going to hand you a tray. It's just, it's just trays with bread and juice. And you can receive a tray and it costs you nothing. But if the deacons come by and you receive Christ, then you are receiving everything you need.
the price that Jesus was willing to pay in order to save me, to save you, is depicted here for us in a meal. It's dinner time. And gathered around the table, Jesus' family. And he says, here, it's time to eat. Here, here is my body. Eat up. This body that was broken for you. As often as you eat this bread, do this in remembrance, he says, of me. And taking the cup, this is what you have to drink. My blood, Jesus says, is real drink, John chapter 6. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. But as often as you do drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Father, I thank you for sending your son. You sent him to seek. And he found, <laughs> he found me. And Father, I, I confess there's a part of me that wants to sit and just be found. To wake up to sit back and say, seek me again, Lord. Meet me again, Lord. Find me again, Lord. And that'll be the end of it. But Jesus, I thank you <laughs> that you don't leave me resting in my comfort zone. You call me out. And you promise, you promise to give me what I need and then to empower me to serve you the way you serve the Father. To, yes, be found, but then to turn and to seek after the ones in my neighborhood, in this, your neighborhood. I thank you for the two men I met yesterday on our prayer walk. The two men who both told me they were going to come to the Morningside Market. And if I hadn't gone, I wouldn't have met them. They'd had no idea. And I thank you, God, for the others who came yesterday morning to the Morningside Market to be seeking people, your people seeking. And I thank you for this body that today has said their amen to Brother Samuel's message that you have called us to be a seeking people up and out of our comfort zone people. And thank you, Jesus, for reminding again, us again what it cost you to find. How uncomfortable, I imagine, it must have been to hang on that cross to find me. Bless your people now as we respond in worship to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the seed you planted in me to grow this tree and I pray, God, you continue to grow us up as we worship and serve and go and tell and find those you've called us to seek. It's in your name we pray. Amen.